The IMF is uh, forecasting the acceleration of growth on the continent at or around uh, 6% this year. Uh, whilst this really impressive growth has been taking place north of our borders, it is also true to say that there's good reason to believe uh, that uh, we, have, uh, we should be confident that South Africa will be catching up uh, in 2014. Projections from the IMF, uh, from the Reserve Bank, and uh, from the National Treasury indicate that the South African economy will possibly get back to trend growth towards the end of this year at around 3%. Standard Bank's view is that the country may well perform far better, certainly in the medium term. First, according to our economists, uh, if we get the regulatory environment right, our offshore gas endowment is likely to add about 1.4% uh, a year to our growth over the next five years. And it's contingent. It's if uh, we get the regulatory environment right. Second. South African government policy is beginning to cohere around the National Development Plan. We expect to see greater policy certainty in the months to come, yes, even during this turbulent election year. The ANC's just released election manifesto is a really clear sign, and there will be more reinforcement of the NDP, we believe, in the coming State of the Nation and budget speeches. This should support a more stable regulatory environment, making it easier for all of us to do business. 5% growth is not in the realms of impossible by 2015 if we make substantial progress in the implementation of the National Development Plan. If we understand the assets we have and we understand that our advantage of young people, how would we match these assets and leverage them to a better outcome? Because if we do not create those pathways of young, for young people, out of poverty, then what will happen is that they will become our demographic nightmare. It will become the time block that will explode on us. And that's why I come back to the state of when we talk of Africa rising, whose Africa is rising? We can have a short-sighted view that our goal is creating more billionaires so that we are the continent with the largest number of billionaires. But I chair a global foundation that deals with hunger. So I don't spend, most of my time is not spent in very nice surroundings like this. I'm in the slums and in the townships and the rural areas of Africa. And I see a lot of anger. Because they don't see the opportunity that they can have of, of even education. What we need to do, and that's partly linked to the revolution in technology, is redefine what are we creating as pathways for young people? And the notion that suddenly we are going to, you know, the demand of my, my, my movement is to create six million jobs. Well, that's a very nice statistic to put out. How are we going to do that? What education is required in order to create those jobs? Because you cannot just expand the public sector. So what, if you go back to the design of what we have to do to create those jobs, to create the growth that allows us to maintain the one in three South Africans are today living on a social grant, requires GDP growth. It requires thinking about what are the skills that take advantage of the new conditions that exist in our, in our world today. And I'm not sure that we are training people to create their own livelihoods. We are training people to look for jobs. But where, who's going to create those jobs? And I think what we should be looking at is how do we enable people to build their own enterprises? And what we should be putting a greater emphasis on is supporting particularly young black people coming out of universities or the schooling system that can build their own businesses that are productive.